Yes, good morning. Happy anniversary to our church. I don't know. Woo! Hey, we are celebrating our four-year anniversary today. It was four years ago, uh, September 16th, that that a bunch of people got together and said, man, we're going to start a new work, and we're going to do a a, a church. And so we advertised and told the world that we're here. And the next thing you know, a bunch of people showed up, and uh, authentic life came into existence. And uh, we're celebrating that today. Yes, we should be cheering for that because I'm going to say that the world is a better place because this church exists. So thank you for being a part of that. Uh, the launch team gave all kinds of money and everything just to make sure this place was beautified. Maybe not as beautiful as me rocking this pink shirt, but it's still pretty cool. I'm having problems with my microphone, so sorry about that if I keep grabbing that. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, if you have a Bible or a device, I really want to encourage you to always bring a Bible to church. And 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, you can go on Version Bible app is what I use, um, but other people I might have other things. And we are starting our brand new spiritual growth campaign called Winning the War in Your Mind. And it's based on the book by Craig Rochelle. And, and what um, a spiritual growth campaign is all about is that we would spiritually grow. And we, so we, we kick in life groups at the same time. We're, we're encouraging people, if you want to, to pick up this book. We got them for uh, a much cheaper than you can on Amazon. So it's one for 15 or two for 25. And we're not making any money on that. It's really just to get it in that, into your hands. You don't need the book to do the campaign. But if you'd like to get the book, you certainly uh, can get that back there. But we also, uh, the idea is that we're all at church every week for four weeks as we go through this series. And I guarantee you, by the end of this service, you're going to sit there and go, man, I better not. Like, I better not miss a service. That's how important and how much I believe it's going to connect with you today. But also, uh, we're in life groups. And life groups are really where we get smaller communities. And, and almost all of them are full hate to say, but there is, we've opened up a brand new one on Wednesday nights, and there's a couple other ones that have some room in them. Uh, my wife and I lead the young married, so there's extra room in that one. Also, uh, that's actually four groups that all meet together on Wednesday night. We call it Wednesday Night Connection, where you can drop off your kids or your middle schoolers, and there's various, various groups all over the, near, nearby the church or right actually here on a location, and it's really to get you connected, especially if you have babies and you have babies in there and you want to be close by, be in the Young Marriage Ministry. Uh, but all together, we have over 550 people, counting our youth and our young adults, 550 people in life groups. So now picture it. Yeah. We're all in line together. We're all grown together. We're studying God's Word, not just on Sunday, but we're studying it in the middle of the week, and then we're also reading things, and so good things will happen. So I'm curious, does anyone else have uh, ongoing negative thoughts run through their their head? Go ahead and lift up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Anybody else feel like you're captive to some of your bad thoughts and things like that? Yeah, a lot of times we just deal with these things and they just keep coming at us and they, they, they just, we can struggle in our life and we can do that. But, but uh, where we have these negative thought patterns or these, these sin areas that we just can't seem to conquer and, and these areas where we just feel cruddy and we built up these, like, these pathways of negative thought. And so this series is all about winning that war and winning that battle that's inside of your mind. But there's good news. Anybody want good news? then shout out, good news. The good news is that God's word is alive and well, and that God's word is a cleansing unit. God literally created his word, not just to teach us, but to help us to beat these things that we beat ourselves down. It is natural if you're a human. How many people here are humans? Yeah, it's natural if you're a human to go down wrong pathways. It just is. But what God wants to do is the unnatural And so he gives us his word to do cleansing. And so before we go any further, uh, we're going to pray. And today's title is Winning the War in Your Mind. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for filling this place with people that are celebrating this church, celebrating you, celebrating the fact that we can learn more from you and about you. Holy Spirit, would you fill us right now? Holy Spirit, will you renew our minds right now? Holy Spirit, will you fill us with your grace and your love? And may our minds explode with the opportunities 
that uh, your peace and your joy and your love can break us free from the prisons that we often have placed ourselves in. So Lord, we pray for connecting uh, to your word today. And we can't thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, um, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be going through uh, the God's Scripture. And we're going to be focusing mostly on the Scriptures of the New Testament of where Apostle Paul is written. I know a lot of you know who Apostle Paul is. But he's such a unique person. And I really I want to call him like a thought warrior. And what I mean by that is that if we talk about dealing with issues when we have battles in our mind. The Apostle Paul hits it straight on. God uniquely designed them and poured into him and poured into his scripture so that the truth can come into your life and the truth would set you free. Let me give you a little background about the Apostle Paul. You know, he was a Jew and he was a Pharisee. Man, he was a spiritual leader. But he had so much anger towards Christianity when Christians came in that, that he and a group of people actually arrested Christians, threw them in the jail, and actually had some of them killed. If you were to ask the Apostle Paul, he would call himself a murderer. In fact, you and me, many of us would say, yep, he was a murderer. And yet, Jesus Christ radically came into his life and said, Paul, you are now no longer going to go in that direction. You're going to go in this way. And you are going to now be my servant and, and be my servant out into to the world. And you're going to reach the un-Jewish people. And Paul did that. Now, do you think that all of a sudden his mind, just instantly because he became a Christian, was instantly clear? Uh, uh, of his past. No, I'm, of course he carried guilt and he carried these things. So he had to live by God's grace. And that's the same thing you need to do. You're carrying guilt from your past, but you can move on. Apostle Paul's the one that said in Romans 7, he says, why do I do the things I do not want to do? The things that I want to do, I can't seem to do. No, I keep doing the things I do not want to do. Anybody else feel, ever feel like that? Yeah. And so then he closes it up. He goes, who's going to save me from this body of death? And then he answers his question. Thanks be to Jesus Christ. And that's what we need to realize even with us. It's Jesus Christ that's going to set us free. Uh, it's our own prisons in our minds. And we carry our past and we need to live in God's grace. So let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we're going to start with verse 3. He says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Let's, let's stop there. You see that word power? We, that, 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 that these things we, that God gives us help have a divine power. Divine means God. Divine power to demolish strongholds. Well, you know that word uh, power uh, is in Greek is dynamis. Anybody want to get a guess? What Didymus in, is an English translation, or what, what word we get from Didymus? Uh, we get dynamite. So he's really saying this, this explosive power that can tear down strongholds, this, this explosive power through the word of God that can break through any, anything that, that goes against his word and that takes us down. So what's a stronghold? Well, a couple months ago, we were kind of focusing on strongholds, but I want to show you uh, two types of strongholds so you can get a visual. Strongholds is really like a castle. It's a, it's a fort. Um, it could be a barricade that you build up, but a stronghold has a purpose. So if you take this one over here to your left, if you notice, there's like a doorway. Well, the villagers, well, they ring the bell, and they're going, the Huns are coming over the hill, and all the villagers would come running into the castle or running into the stronghold. It's the last line of defense. Now, what this means in your brain is that Jesus is the one that's coming over the hill to conquer and to bring life into your heart and in your mind. It's Jesus that's coming in, but we have what's called these mental strongholds that are saying, stay away. You can have no part of this. Or there's negative thinking that are in your brain that have been built up over years and years and years, so much so that it's become a fort in your mind. It's been the same pattern over and over and over. Negative thought. I'm worthless. I'm never good enough. I, I, I keep being reminded of what my mom used to call me when I was growing up. And it's just been built. And so every day you even wake up with the same type of woe-hum feelings. And these are what's called strongholds. It's in there. And it, it's very difficult to tear down. It's the last line of defense. Only it's Jesus that wants to come in and say, I want to bring freedom. I want you to see you the way I see you. I want you to be loved the way I adore you. 
Stop, keep, stop thinking that you're worthless because I have made you worth more. And until we open these strongholds up and give and say, I want freedom in Christ, we're going to keep battling the same thing over and over and over again. See, the devil wants you to keep believing. The devil, on the other hand, is like, yeah, keep that stronghold. Yeah, you are a worthless piece of junk. Yeah, keep, keep thinking that. You aren't worth, you know, why would God ever love a person like you? And the devil does this, but we certainly assist him because we're often our own worst enemies. We say self-loathing thoughts that nobody else ever says to us, but only us. And I don't know if you want freedom. Does, if you want freedom, say, I want, I want freedom. Yes, we need to have that, you know. And so let's look at 2 Corinthians uh, 10 again, but this time we're going to start with verse 4 and then go on to verse 5. It says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. And we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Do you like that? We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Why do we do that? You know, everything that we ever do and we talk about here is God wants to do things to bring you freedom. It's always for your own good or the good of somebody else. God is just good that way, you know. And so why don't you high-five somebody or air-five them and say, get your mind right. Tell them, get your mind right. Come on, tell the other person, say, get your mind right. That's what we're going to be doing today. So remember, uh, Craig Rochelle in his book, Winning the War in Your Mind, has a tagline. Change your thinking, change your life. Change your thinking, change your life. That's what's going to be the theme throughout. Change your thinking, change your life. So we have a couple points here if you want to take notes. The first one is this. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Make sense? You know, if your thoughts are... Uh, I, I, I can't do anything, I'll never win, I'll never be good enough, that's where your life is going to go. If, if you're, whatever your strongest thoughts are, that's where you're going to go. And what's so good about Pastor Craig, he did lots of research on cognitive, behavioral, psychology, um, so I didn't have to do all that research, so obviously I'm taking a lot of this because the series is based on this from things that, that are in his book, so if you read it, you're going to hear some of these same things, but it's so good. And here's the idea. What you think, your feelings, your body, your emotions will follow. I know you know that, right? But we're going to really hammer this home. What you think, whatever your strongest feelings are, that's where your body, your mind, your thoughts are going to go, your feelings. You know, the, so if you're a young woman and, and you're, you just believe that you're only worth something to a boy if you sexually are active with him, that, that, that nobody could ever really love you unless you give them your body, well, guess what? If that's what you think, your body's going to follow. Make sense? You know, if you're a guy and you think that the only way I can ever uh, uh, be good enough uh, to anybody is I have to be a workaholic and I have to work my tail off and even then I, I, I might not do well or I better get raises and I better rise up that ladder and get help, all, all these different things or else I'm not worth anything. I'll burn out my family. I'll burn out my life. I'll do all that because that's what I think. Whatever you think, your body, your emotions, your feelings will follow. If you say you can't do something, well, I'm going to probably say you can't, you know. But if you say I can do something, I can break free, or I can do accomplish something, then you probably can. But if you're negative thinking the other way, it's just not good, you know. Um, and, and so uh, look at this, this, this line right here. The life we have is a reflection of the thoughts we think. The life we have is a reflection of the thoughts we think. You know, there's a thing, if you've ever done counseling with me or even uh, in sermons, uh, a thing called self-fulfilling prophecy. You ever heard of that? It, it, it's like, I think I can't, therefore I can't. You fulfilled that prophecy because that's where your brain is going. 
You know, uh, here's an example. So a, a, guy, a guy say, hey, come to the party with us. We're all going to hang out. It's going to be a lot of fun. No, nobody's going to talk to me or whatever. And so, but you talk the guy to go to the party. And what does he do? He goes into the corner and he sits here like this. And nobody's talking to him. What, you know, and so he goes, see, no one talked to me. Well, you're, you, you, you self-fulfilled your own prophecy. Who would want to talk to you when you're off in the corner like this? No. What you need to do is if you think you can't, then you probably can't. But if you think you can, then you can. I want to self-fulfill the prophecies in a positive direction. Anybody with me? You know, when I was a kid, I was a crybaby. Um, I had really debilitating insecurities. I know maybe people see me up here. I still have insecurities, but uh, I've conquered a lot of them, a lot of work, a um, lot of just letting Jesus heal me. But I had so many insecurities. I couldn't go in front of public. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go and stand up in front of a class. Uh, and I was a crybaby as a child. And there's reasons why I had all these issues when I was a kid. But I was a crybaby. Now picture somebody that you remember when you were growing up that was a crybaby or, or maybe one of your grandkids or kids or whatever and a crybaby. Now double that. And that was me. And I was a crybaby because I thought I was worthless. I thought nothing could go right for me. Everything would always go wrong. And so the only emotion that would come out would be I'd cry. And I'd cry in all kinds of circumstances. And, and, and why did that? Because of this phrase. The life we have is a reflection of the thoughts that we think. And if I think I'm a piece of junk daily, the outcome, somebody else might have it be anger, but I'm not a very violent or angry person, so mine came out in self-pity just and crying. And then one day, it was interesting, uh, a friend of mine, Kevin Reese, it was, I was in sixth grade, he was in seventh, and we were all bike riding, a bunch of us kids, and I, my bike fell over, I fell over. My bike didn't fall over, I fell over. And, and, and I forgot to tell you, I'm not a good bike rider either. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't pop a wheelie, I still can't pop a wheelie, because of fear. I was so afraid to try, like, I'm going to die. And so I was the only one of my friends that could never pop a wheelie. They'd all be jumping off of, of road, dirt piles and stuff, and I'd be like, and anyways, so as I was, I fall over, and I skin my knee, and I start crying, because that's what Bruce does, and, and uh, I remember this time, and it wasn't Kevin, my friend Kevin Reese, who's in seventh grade, uh, it wasn't like he was, you know, really coming at me, or really judging, he just literally said, he goes, Bruce, I, I'm crying, I'm like, <laughs> I'm 11 years old. <laughs> and then he goes, Bruce, why do you cry all the time? I go, because I'm hurt. You foolish, just because you're seventh grade, you know. And he's like, Bruce, all of us fall down and you don't see any of us crying. He says, why do you cry all the time? And it was just that moment, believe it or not, that I started asking myself, yeah, why do I cry all the time? And all of a sudden I realized I got to stop playing the victim, and I need to start acting like a victor. I wasn't a believer yet, but it was a transformation. I really stopped crying. I just like that. I just mind over matter. I was like, I guess, I guess you don't cry. And, 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 and not that I don't cry. I mean, if anybody's around me, every Disney movie, I'm a mess. You know, every, every, you see a dog die on TV, I'm like, <laughs> You know, or, 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 or you know, when I love romantic things. I'm a chick flick guy, and I'm like bawling with, with my wife more than my wife, and, and I'm like, <laughs> like this. So I'm still a crybaby, but for emotional things, for happy things, for, for awesome things like that. But, but man, oh man, I had to take back my life. In the same way, I tell you this, because just as I had to decide, I'm going to stop being a victim, I'm going to be a victor, I'm asking you, to make the decision throughout these series, throughout these weeks, that I want to take back my mind. I want to take back my life. I'm tired of Satan duping me. i, I got to break down that stronghold. And so I'm going to ask you to do, do just that. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. So where are your thoughts taking you? If you're always going in the direction of your strongest thoughts, where's your life taking you? And are you happy about that? Uh, let's do a thought audit. I'm going to show you this on the screen. So we're going to do a thought audit. So uh, worried is on the left side and peaceful on the other. Which one are you more like? 
You know, if you were to give a score like that, are you more of this worried person where you worry about everything? You worry about your kids, you worry about your money, you worry about you, you worry about things, you just worry, you just, everything's always negative and you just, and even when something happens, you just go right down into the bad section of your heart. Are you more of a worrier or is your life uh, characterized by peacefulness where you go, hey, God's got this, you know, everything might not go right, but it's still good. What, what do you have? Peace? You know, let's look at the second one, negative. So are you more of a negative person? Uh, nothing will ever go right for me. Nothing will ever work. I'm a piece of junk. Uh, everybody around me is a piece of junk. Why should I even get up? I go to work and it's going to be miserable, you know, and, and stuff. Are you more of a negative person? Oh, the economy or even what's going on in our government. And that's just all, everything you're focusing on. You don't even want to wake up because you're like, the world is going to hell in a handbasket, which it might be. Okay, but you just think like that all the time. Or are you more of a positive? Says, yeah, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, and I'm here to make a difference. You know, are you more positive? Are you saying, hey, yeah, work is kind of stressful, but you know what? I'm going to be a blessing. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm a positive. You know what? I can leave work in with joy. Well, what about the, the, this last one? And we look down and here, and because I can't remember it, you need to put it up. <laughs> Worldly. I don't know how many hints I was trying to give. It was like that. It says, but I'm a positive person, so I knew it was eventually going to come up. Worldly. So are you a worldly person? Everything's about me. Everything's about here and now. Everything's about my life. Think about it. Worldly means everything's focusing on what has to do with me. It's all about me and my life. Guess what? If you are a worldly person, you're probably also negative and also um, uh, worrying all the time. Because it's all about you. It's all about how you feel, how you look, how you're going to be. And it's all about the here and now. Or are you more eternal? Where you sit down and go, my life, my, my money, the things that I have are for an eternal perspective. God has more for me. And I want to be a part of that. My life is given to Christ because he first gave his life to me. I have been bought with a price by the blood of the Lamb. And I'm going to live a life of righteousness. And I'm going to live a life that uses my finances, uses my things, uses my own heart to better this world so that I can make a difference for the kingdom. I'm going to guarantee if that's the way you're thinking, everything else starts to get into place. It just does. It just does. So what's your thought patterns like? What are you mostly like? How would you characterize your thoughts? That's a thought on it. And you can do that in lots of things. The yin, yang, this or that, or whatever. Okay, the second point I want to go. So we're always going to go in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And if you're a worrier, if you're negative, that's the direction you're going to go. Point number two is this. You cannot have a positive life when you have a negative mind. Let's all say that together. Can you read that with me? You cannot have a positive life when you have a negative mind. Make sense? You can't have a positive life. It's not going to go well if everything's negative in your mind. Because even if things were going well, you still look at it in a negative bent. And therefore, you're going to keep working. You're going to keep burning out. You're going to keep thinking wrong thoughts, and it's going to hurt you. So here's two foundational thoughts that we're going to build upon. That's going to be throughout this series. And again, a lot of this is in the book, but, but here we go. Identify the biggest stronghold holding you back. I want to teach you something. This phrase, what lie am I believing? What lie am I believing? So we, we, we've got to identify the stronghold in our life. Remember, the stronghold is that prisoner of your own thoughts, that, that prisoner of your own making. What lie am I believing? Um, and, and what we do is we build these these pathways in our brain. Uh, God's so good, and he's so creative, and he's such a great inventor. Uh, uh, and, 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 and us as people, just so many good things that he put, but, but our brain is designed that once you think something, and a couple times you think the same thing, it becomes easier to think that thought again. We build a neuropathway, and he does this on purpose. Like, think about driving. 
you, you go to someone's house once, maybe you don't remember how to get there again, but if you went to that same person's house a couple times, it's just easy, right? You just kind of go, that's it. That's the same thing. You built a pathway in your brain. And we do this, and God has done it so well. And let me put it in a positive way. Um, uh, he's given us this, this thing. It's like a real a good drug that you can have. It's legal. It's called dopamine. You ever heard of that? And so when you think a positive thought, Uh, something good happens. Dopamine shoots through you. And he did this so that we go, hey, I like this. I like, uh, you you come to church, dopamine shoots through. When we're in the middle of worship and some song hits you, dopamine. And that's God sitting there saying, this is good. This is good. You know, when, when, when you're sitting there on your Instagram and you get 54 likes, dopamine. You know, when you, when you hear that some girl comes up to you, you go, ooh, girlfriend, your haircut looks awesome. Dopamine. <laughs> right? Speaking of awesome, wait till you see my wife, man. She's looking hot today. And, 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 and I can't help it. I can't help it. Dopamine is, I'm, it's, I look at her and I'm like, dopamine. <laughs> but this can also be for bad things, believe it or not. A guy sitting, mostly, you know, sits down and is looking at pornography, dopamine. This is fun. <laughs> and it half builds a pattern, dopamine, dopamine, you know. Drinking every time I watch a basketball game, dopamine shoots through. I like this. This is my life. And then we build up addictive behaviors. And then we become addicted to porn. We become addicted to um, uh, whatever, drinking. We get addicted to w- these things. And even though dopamine is supposed to be for positive reinforcement, uh, it can still be doing, in, in talking about strongholds, you know, porn addiction, uh, uh, sexual addictions. Uh, I need my boyfriend to make me feel good about myself, and so I'll give my body. Dopamine shoots through, and this can become a pattern in your life and a stronghold that we got to break down. So what's your stronghold in your life? Is it some of these addictive things? Is it just negative thought? Because we build these pathways. Look at it like this. So I, uh, so in my front yard, if I walk, uh, uh, I just keep walking the same path in my front yard. Not only would I kind of look crazy to all my neighbors, but if I do this a hundred times a day for a hundred days, eventually I'm going to build a rut in my grass. My grass will die and that will be dirt. And it will be easier to see that. That's what a, a, a neuro pathway is like. The more we do something, the more we, we, we uh, make a path. What we're asking you to do is get move from your negative pathways to do a positive pathway. And to do that, you have to get off that route and onto a new one. So look at these pictures right here. So this is kind of like how what's in your brain. These are neuro pathways. And, I, and we got one with this guy jogging. He's jogging. Hopefully he's making a good pathway. So what we're saying to you is you have to identify your stronghold and create a neuro pathway. So here's the challenge. With God's help, we're going to renew our minds. With God's help, we're going to renew our minds. Anybody with me? Anybody want freedom? Let me hear freedom. We need to do that. Look at Romans 12, uh, verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and to approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Look at that first part again. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Do not keep doing your negative things. Do not keep doing your negative thoughts. Instead, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Jump neuro pathways. Get off the negative neuro pathway that says, I'm a piece of junk. I'm worthless. I'm just a fat pig. I'm a blah, 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 blah. I Nobody could ever love me. Even God can't love me. I'm never good enough. I know the church tells me that, that Jesus loves me just the way I am, but, but I don't believe that. we got to get off that lie because that's a lie you're believing. And you need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind because nobody's mind gets renewed the day you receive Jesus. Your life changed. You're now a new creation. But our brains are not renewed. We need to do that by reading his word. His word is the key. And it's the truth that will set you free. Let me give you some examples. Um, 
normally you have a hard day at work, maybe you don't like your job or whatever, and, and the way you release your stress is you come home and you yell at your, your husband or your wife or you yell at your kids and, and things like that. Okay, now we're going to jump pathways. And now what you're going to do is you're going to say, you know, when I drive home, I'm going to turn off the radio and pray. And I'm going to pray, God, help me love my wife. Help me to love my kids. And now I've jumped and after I build that pattern, that every time I pray before I go on the door and I start to love, now not only do I change, but my whole family changes. You see, that's how you change from a negative to a positive pathway. Uh, uh, normally, when you, you feel cruddy about yourself and I, I'm no good, you walk over to the refrigerator and you get a three-gallon thing of ice cream and you eat it all. Okay, so now what you need to do is say, you know what, instead, Lord, I'm going to walk still, but instead of the refrigerator, I'm going to go to my front porch. I'm just going to stare at the sunset, and I'm going to praise you. I'm going to turn on some worship music. Oh, and then you do that more often enough, you're going to go, okay, I don't need to do this. Or, or when you start looking at Instagram, and you see everybody else's lives and how fun they are, and you start to hate your friends. You know, and so you, you, you got this negative, man, I, 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 I'm no good, they're awesome, they have the best things, and so you go, I got to stop doing that. You know, and so instead you pick up the Bible, you pick up your U version, and, and, and you, you read scripture, you renew your mind. You're a girl walking through the hallways, and every single time you go, everybody else is prettier than me. I'm a dog, you know, I'm, everybody's pretty. And you say, I'm going to change my behavior. I'm going to realize I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God created me to be me, and I just need to be me. And I'm lovely, and I'm, I'm a beautiful. Everything in God's creation is beautiful, so why aren't I? We need to refill. you got to change your pathway. Ident so here we go. This is worth a lot. Identify your stronghold. Name it. Why? Because you cannot defeat that which you cannot define. You must name that stronghold. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a stronghold. Now, not all 75 of your strongholds, okay, we, we all have a lot of them. You're just going to pick one today. One this week that you're going to say, i got to break this cycle. I've got to stop this way of thinking. So the first one is we've got to identify our stronghold, right? The second thing we're going to be learning throughout the series is name the truth that demolishes the stronghold. So, remember, what's the lie I'm believing? That I'm worthless, that God can't love me. Let's just take that. God can't really love me if he knows me. Okay, that's a lie that you're believing. What's the truth? Jesus Christ died for all. Jesus Christ loves you. That Jesus Christ, his blood of the lamb, Jesus Christ, was given to you. And just by grace you are saved. Not by what you do, but by who you've received. It's not based on your actions. It's based on the actions of Christ. That's the truth. So we need to stop the lie by filling our lives with the truth. Look at John 8, 32. He says, this is Jesus. He says, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Let's all read that together. Ready? I want to hear it loud. Ready? Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That's awesome. If there's ever a scripture to memorize, this is it. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You can actually put it in a first person. Then I will know the truth, and the truth will set me free. And truth is a person, Jesus Christ. It is the truth that will set you free, and truth is a person, Jesus Christ. You know, um, so I went to seminary. And uh, I know many of you are shocked. Really? You're educated? You know, I, 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 I get that. I get that. I know you never know what I'm going to say. I, I, but I went to seminary. So it's master's to get my master's in divinity. You have to take Greek uh, and Hebrew. You have to study old Greek and old, old, old Hebrew. And there's nothing more uh, crazy than that. You remember I had pretty radical learning disabilities. I was fourth grade reading level as a senior in high school. And here I am in seminary, and, and, and my learning disabilities can crop up in different ways. Some of them are pretty much gone. Other ones, people go, wow, there it is. I just saw it. And well, when I was in seminary, you could see it all over the place. Greek is like algebra on steroids. And so I'm, I'm, I've taken Greek, and I just want you to know, I'm, I'm laying it all out here. At the end of the year, the professor, she calls me up, and um, I remember going to her podium. She goes, Bruce, you deserve a D minus. That's what all your testing shows. You deserve a D minus. 
but since I don't want to see you again, I'm going to give you a D plus. <laughs> she was half kidding, but she was telling the truth. She's really like, basically she was just saying, I'm going to let you through. You know, I just, I'm not going to make you go through in a whole nother year. You know, go on. You know, you're going to be a church planter. You don't really need to know a lot. And, and, and so, so, so that, that happened. That's all real. That's exactly true. Well, then a year later, I have Hebrew. And Hebrew is the craziest language. It's got dots for vowels. They don't have vowels. They put dots and they put these little, uh, it was just crazy. And, and I, I, I failed. And in this case, the whole school decided, let's just pass him on, even though he failed Hebrew. <laughs> He's going to be a church planter. What is that? The congregation probably doesn't care. You know, whatever. And, and, but my, my Hebrew professor said this to me. No joke. God's truth. He leaned over my desk one time when I was, I, I was almost crying. And, and he goes, Bruce, if you can't figure out Hebrew, you'll never be good for the kingdom. Wow. Tough stuff. That's exactly what he did. He was trying to ed- encourage me, you know, but, but defeated me. And with all my learning disabilities and all my inadequacies, the, all these things that I feel, I often go right back to when I was a kid. And I remember driving home, and I was crying. And I pulled over to my church, and I went to my, my pastor, Pastor Rich, and I said, Rich, I told him the story, and I said, and he's right. I'm the dumbest person in the whole seminary. Everybody knows that. I can't figure anything out. I can't figure this Hebrew, and I'm just, I, I think I'm going to quit school. And he goes, Bruce, you see that Hebrew book over there, that one with all the dust on it? I haven't cracked that open since I left seminary. He goes, there's so many smarter people. I don't need to know Hebrew. I just find somebody else who knows Hebrew on the internet or whatever and, and do that. And I'm like, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Why should I, how can I learn enough? I go, there's smarter people than me that know this stuff. Yeah. And he goes, here, I want to ask you a question. Again, God's truth. He literally went like this. He goes, Bruce, what'd you get in preaching? I go, A minus. He goes, good. But what'd you get in counseling? I go, A he goes, what'd you get in discipleship and evangelism? I go, A. He goes, that's what it takes to be a pastor. He goes, Hebrew, you don't need to know Hebrew. Other people know Hebrew. You are uniquely made. And so I realized that I might not be the best preacher in the world, but I'm the best preacher God made me to be. I might not be the best evangelist in the world, but I'm the evangelist that God made me to be. I may not be the best counselor, but I'm the counselor that God made me to be. And I had to make a change my value. Instead of being a victim, I have to be a victor. I have to make change these things. And from that moment on, I realized I can do this. With God's help, I can do this. And so, you know, th- th- that's the way we all need to be thinking. Because it is the truth that will set me free. And truth is a person, Jesus Christ. Amen? So as we close in this, I want to read our verse again in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power, explosive power to demolish strongholds. And we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. People, look at me. Set the prisoner free. And that prisoner is you in your mind. Set the prisoner free. Because it is the truth. Stop believing the lie. Believe the truth. You know, life groups begin this week. When do they begin? This week. This week. So if you have a Monday group, then you start tomorrow. If you have a Tuesday group, you start Tuesday. If you have Wednesday, Wednesday night connection, then this Wednesday is when you get going. Check in your kids. If you haven't signed up for a life group, go ahead and sign up for a life group. I mean, give it a shot. But it's the truth that will set you free. And truth of God's word. And truth is a person, Jesus Christ. It's all about that. Let's pray. And I'm going to ask you to find your stronghold for you. It's just you and your brain. No one's going to hear it. And I want you to do that right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for drawing us here today. Thank you for the beauty that is you. Thank you for all that you are and do in our lives. Now where your heads are about, this is for everybody. It says, there is a war going on in my mind. And I want want to take down that stronghold. If that's you, lift up your hands. Say, there's a war in my mind. I want to take down that stronghold. Lift up your hands everywhere. And I want to let the truth set me free. 
Heavenly Father, as a pastor of this church, I lit all these hands lifted up everywhere. I pray as the pastor of this church for them, for their minds, for their hearts. Lord, that they would be victors instead of victims, that they would stop having the negative self-talk. Whatever their stronghold is, Lord, I pray that you help them define it and you help them break down those walls. And Lord, would they find freedom in you, freedom to live the way that you've called them to live, and that these would be gone, gone, gone. Go ahead and put your hands down. Now our heads are bowed. Maybe you haven't received Jesus yet. You're saying, I need to ask Jesus into my life. I want to give you that opportunity. So just could you lift up your hand right now high if you're saying, I want to ask Jesus as my Lord and Savior today. I want to pray for you right where you're sitting. Go ahead and just lift it up high. I see that hand. Anybody else? Thank you. You see that over there? Anybody else? Don't be afraid. Lift it up. Let's, let's break free. Jesus, I want you as my Savior. Okay, go ahead and put your hands down. I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and whether you're afraid to lift up your hand or maybe you're online, just pray this after me in your heart. Jesus, come into my life. I ask you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I now want to live for you. Thank you for giving me freedom and hope. I now ask you into my heart. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Let's say, man, a couple of people received Jesus. That's awesome.